Welcome back everyone. In this video, let's talk about one of my favorite technical indicators and that would be the stochastics, also called the stochastic oscillator. This is what it looks like down here. There's basically two lines that parallel each other. It's the percent K line and the percent D line. There's an overbought range, an oversold range, and then what I refer to in the middle as the sweet spot. And the stochastic technical indicator is supposed to measure the momentum of price. The theory is, is that momentum has to change before direction can change for a stock price. So if you're standing right here at P and you throw a ball very high in the air, initially when you throw it, its velocity, its uh, Y vector is, is very fast. However, at some point gravity takes over, momentum halts, it, it, it changes uh, direction as gravity pulls it back down to the ground. This is what we're trying to get signals for. When does the momentum of the share price of a company change? So in this video, let's cover everything you need to know about stochastics before you start using them with your trading. Let's do an example on Yahoo Finance just because this is free charting software. Obviously, you can use whatever charting software you want. But this is a graph of Microsoft over, the six, over a six month period with a time interval of one day. So to add the stochastics indicator, go up here to the plus icon for indicators and then uh, search for, you can do search here, for stochastics. Now this box is gonna pop up and let's explain all the inputs you have to give. The first one is uh, N, which is the time period, 14. Now what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything specific because it depends on what your chart is uh, aligned to. So right now I have a time interval of one day. So this period is going to be measuring the stochastics uh, to calculate over the last 14 days. However, if I switch this interval to one minute, five minutes, one week, one month, then this 14 measures uh, the last 14 trading periods of five minutes, one week, one month, whatever. The fast line is gonna be your percent K line. You can change the color, I'll just have mine be black. The slow line is the percent D line. This one is gonna be red. And then for overbought and oversold, you can do whatever uh, pr uh, percentages you want. If you think overbought is greater than 90 or greater than 70, you can change this. I personally like making my oversold range 35. Uh, I feel like rarely does it ever get down uh, below 20. So 35 to me is a better oversold range. Once again, percent K, percent D, and this is your N for calculating uh, the stochastics. So once you've added the technical indicator, you can change the inputs anytime you want by just clicking on this over here. Now, before we get into the formula for stochastics, I want to first compare it to another more commonly known technical indicator, and that would be RSI. RSI stands for Relative Strength Index, and I like stochastics better than RSI because you'll notice when you compare these two on Microsoft, in the stochastics, it's much more likely to show you when it reaches this overbought range and touches the oversold range. Because you'll see here, uh, it's oversold here and here, here and here, overbought basically all of up here. But according to RSI, it never gets in the overbought or oversold range once, which is why when I look at RSI, I don't feel like it tells me anything and stochastics shows me more. So here's the formula for stochastics. Now, if you're not a math person, don't worry. Let's just go through this real quick. But how you calculate percent K is the most recent closing price subtracted from the lowest price of the 14 previous trading sessions, and then you divide it by the highest price of the 14 previous trading sessions subtracted by uh, the lowest. This will give you a, a value between zero and one. Multiply it by 100 to get a percentage. And the percent D line uh, is, is the slow line, the signal line uh, that trails the percent K. Because what you do is you take the highest percent K value of the previous three uh, trading days and then you divide it by the lowest. So the percent D is supposed to always look like it's trading the percent K, uh, trailing the percent K. When the percent K uh, crosses below the percent D, that's a signal that momentum has changed. When the percent K goes above percent D, once again, a signal that momentum of the stock has changed. 
Now before we get into specific examples, I just have to caution you about these terms of overbought and oversold. These are very relative terms. Overbought does not mean go out and short the stock, start buying puts on whatever is overbought. Same thing with oversold. That doesn't mean you should buy the stock, go long, start buying calls. And I'll, I'll, I'll give you an example here. And here is Google. This is referred to as a power stock. You have all four of the moving averages lined up nicely. The end period uh, for the percent K formula is, is one week. And you'll notice that Google has been in the overbought range for over a year, going all the way back to November of 2020. So if you saw that it was overbought in November of 2020, does that mean you should short the stock? No, it doesn't. What, what's happening here is that the company is just overbought because potentially they have really good revenue. They have really good quarterly earnings, good news, so forth and so forth. The opposite is true when stocks are in a downtrend. So let's look at Clorox. It's been in the oversold range, according to the stochastics on a one-week interval, for over a year, since September of 2020. Now, if you saw that it was oversold here, should you have been buying Clorox? No. <laughs> it would have been a bad move. So, overbought can mean that there's a strong uptrend happening, and it could be for a really good reason. It could be deservedly so. Overbought, once again, doesn't mean go short. Same thing for oversold. Once again, it can just indicate there's a strong downtrend occurring. As always, with most things in the market, the trend is your friend. Don't fight the trend. If something is strongly uptrending, I wouldn't trade against that. If something is downtrending, I wouldn't buy that. However, once you've indicated that there's a strong uptrend, you can find buying opportunities using stochastics. Let's go back to Google. Once again, a power stock with all four of the moving averages lined up. We've established from the stochastics that there's a strong uptrend occurring. Uh, lots of people are buying this stock week to week. So can we take advantage of this knowing there's a strong uptrend occurring? So here are the stochastics on the uh, daily time frame. Once again, this was uh, N equaling 14 weeks. This is N equaling 14 days. We're seeing much more variance now. You can switch this to be one minute, uh, five minutes. Uh, one day, I feel like, is, is the time period that I want to trade in. I'm not a day trader. I'm more of a swing trader over several days or several weeks. And the stochastics definitely moves around. You'll see that it gets oversold, overbought, oversold. So how can we use the daily stochastics to find good indicators to buy? Well, when the percent K line crosses over the percent D line, you know there's been a signal change. And they happen often, you know, in the overbought range, you can see that, you know, the percent K and the percent D often cross paths. But where I think that when the percent K and the percent D cross each other is, is most important is when you get to this uh, falling below this 80% range, and anytime when there's a strong uptrend, the momentum reverses in the oversold range. So this is a strongly uptrending stock, and in the short term, it's been oversold right here. So if you saw this signal and you decided that you wanted to buy Google, you can go up to the chart and you can say, well, from here to here, I would have caught a positive uh, price momentum. We'll go here as well. It was being uh, sold off, and then the momentum shifts percent K over the percent D. Let's go up to the chart. So if you had bought Google here, you could have ridden it back up all the way to here. Now, it's up to you when you want to exit these positions. If you are looking to, uh, you know, hold long term, this could be a good entry point. But as soon as it gets back up here and you just want to take your 3 to 5% profit, you can sell out. Same thing here, uh, oversold, the percent K crosses over the percent D. This might have been a good time to buy. You can then write it up, 3 to 5%. If you're buying calls and you're leveraging, you can make even more. Here was a huge general pullback in the markets, percent K over percent D. It's up to you if you think this is a, a good indicator. Once again, there are lots of false indicators all over the charts. You know... Uh, I wouldn't short this, you know, if it's falling down here or falling down here, I'm not going to short a power stock that's in a strong uptrend. Let's do the opposite now with Clorox. 
Clorox is in a strong downtrend. So how can we interpret the short-term stochastics knowing that the long-term, it's, it's stuck in a downtrend? It's being massively sold off. So here are the daily stochastics on Clorox, and you can just kind of highlight them. Anytime it gets above this 35 range, uh, you know that it's temporarily upswinging. The long term is still that it's, it's being oversold, being sold off. But when it gets into this overbought range, that means in the short term it was overbought. So when the percent %K crosses over the percent %D, falls below that 20, this might be a good time to short the stock or buy put contracts. Once again, you can just go through these lots of false indicators when momentum is shifting uh, in the up direction. However, it's more evident in the down direction. So look at here. It, Clorox got into the overbought range uh, here. The percent %K crossed over the percent %D. This might have been a good time to short or uh, buy a put as you wrote it down. Once it's in the oversold range, you might want to just take your profits uh, and then wait for it to flip on you again at some point in the future. So before you go out there and use stochastics, let me give you some general good trading tips. And the first one is don't trade against the general trend. So if, if a stock has good long-term trends, uh, strong uptrends or strong downtrends, don't trade against it. You want to trade with the long-term trends. Now, long-term, all good long-term trends eventually have to end. You need to be able to uh, know when a long-term trend uh, has ended and maybe a stock either reverses or enters a period of consolidation. But in general, if the long-term is that it's uh, overbought, then don't try and short that stock even, even in the short term because the long term will eventually win out probably. Additionally, I, I wouldn't trade on news or earnings because this is not technical analysis. If you're watching CNBC or you hear something in the news, you then want to go check the stochastics for that day to see if the news is right. You're not, you're not going to get any kind of momentum or, or, or indicator on a, day, on a one day period. It takes several days for the true impact on the market of a newsworthy event to play out. Same thing with earnings. If you're trying to trade something and a, and a company is reporting their earnings in a week, just, just ignore it. You know, there's, there's thousands of stocks on the New York Stock Exchange to trade. If you were trying to short or buy puts on Clorox around here, well, actually, you would have made a lot of money because the stock had earnings here, huge fall off. But what if you were trying to trade it the other direction and you weren't paying attention to when a company's quarterly earnings statement was coming out, you would have gotten blindsided. So for that reason, anytime a stock has earnings coming up, I, I don't play that. I leave those kinds of trades to the professionals who have true insider knowledge on Wall Street. And then finally, I have to caution you that no technical indicator is perfect. You're just hoping that stochastics are more right than they are wrong for you while interpreting them. You have to look at stochastics along with several other indicators in order to increase your chances of success. So here are some other technical indicators that I like looking at. Obviously, there's candlesticks. I've been showing you lines in this video, but there's lots of great information you can get from you know buying and selling, opening and closing. Candlesticks tell you all of that. Additionally, anytime you know markets gap up or down, like look here at Microsoft, those gaps tend to fill in the short term. I love looking at moving averages because often the share price will either bounce off the 20 or uh, going up or going down. You also want to look at trade volume. Anytime trade volume falls, that's not good for the stock potentially getting through lines of resistance or potentially falling through lines of support. You always want good trade volume in addition to your stochastic indicators telling you uh, that something is overbought or oversold. Okay guys, that is the basic of stochastics or the stochastic oscillator. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up so the algorithm knows it's good. If you have any comments or questions or suggestions for videos in the future, let me know in a comment down below. I love hearing from you guys. Till the next video, take care.